And then when it comes to the color, I, you know, it's again, you know, I, I'm totally open. I don't, I'm not uh, set on one, one way or another. I just know that, you know, like I said, I'm just going to follow with the same windows and white trim of the windows, but the actual siding, nothing else on the house is siding. I take it back. There's a, um, on, and, uh, there's like a little gable going up like for the attic stairs. And for some reason, they actually use shingles to side that. Um, so that's the only thing on the house that's not brick. So this is the only thing on the house that would be uh, uh, non-brick. Thank you, Mr. Zacharias. Um, Hank, you wanna roll into to your report? Yeah, uh, basically what we're looking at, uh, the house is a contributing resource in the Hill District. It was built in 1927. A lot of us will know it as the former Andre home. Um, part of the issues here is that the uh, demolition occurred prior to seeking Historic District Commission approval. So we have limited documentation as to what was there, but I did provide you with some pictures and email that were furnished to me by Mr. Zacharias. Um, and I'll scroll down to those so that you can see where we're at with this here. Uh, hopefully, oh, I have to do this. Okay, can you can you see this? We're still seeing the, the drawing, Hank. We're not seeing okay. the, pho Hold. the photography. All right. Hold on here. Let me do this again. This is the original house as it was before any of the additions were put on. Um, you can see what he's talking about with the double doors here and the double doors on the side and the flat roof. This has been long gone, this uh, over here, and this was put on into windows uh, on a previous edition. So hold on one second, and I'm going to get another one up here, which shows how it was before they started the project. Uh, let's see here. Okay, can everybody see that? We're still seeing Windows Explorer here. Okay, hold on. Can you see that now? Yep. Yes. Okay. So you can see what was happened in the previous edition. This was a kitchen edition that was approved a few years ago. Um, that one shed piece that was here is gone. And this edition was still here at this point in time. This over here on the left is what was demolished prior to coming to the HDC. So that's what he started with. Then, uh, are there any questions about this before I go back to another one? Uh, yes. Yeah, that Hank, that um, the sun porch that's no longer there, that, that was an addition at some point or was it a part of the original house? And That old wood one that was there? We do. No, the, the one we're looking at here in the frame. Yeah, that, this that, one here, I'm sure, was an addition because it wasn't part of the original house. Um, but I don't know exactly when it was. There's no record of that going up at, and what time it was. Yeah, that was the issue is that we didn't have any record of that actually having a permit or um, any type of plans to my knowledge. Okay, so, I wasn't sure if it was a... Uh, like a remodel of a, an open covered patio or so. Just it could have been, but the original floor in there was tiled um, and it opened up into the house. So it could have been a sun porch that was enclosed at some point in time, okay. but I don't have a record that I'm aware of of any of that. Okay. So th and that was done long before Mr. Zacharias acquired the property. Mm -hmm. So let me do this. So what he's basically proposing here is you can see this. And unfortunately, there we go. 
So that's what he's got going on here. Uh, you still, can kind of get a little bit better idea of what he's proposing. Still not and in this Hank. view here, you can see that it splits the windows. Hey, Hank, we're still, uh, we, uh, I, I just see the uh, Windows Explorer. Okay, hold on. We will try this again. Nope. Oh, you had it. Yep, that was the old one. I think he's trying to show what's there now. Yeah. Okay. So this right here, the footings he's been in and he's done with, no, it's this a, area here is not finished. Windows Explorer. I there's, can't say it, Hank. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. We'll get this. I think I got too many things going on here. Let's try this. Can you see that now? No. Oh, oh boy. Uh, one more time if this doesn't work. Got it? I see a drawing. Okay. Drawing. All right. So that's kind of what he has there now. So what's going on here is that where he has two right now, he's going to have one. And that's the one elevation as you're looking at it straight on from the back. So we have that. Then on the other side, uh, when you take a look, he's got two windows on that side. And this would be the north elevation. Or no, I'm sorry, the south elevation. So this would be what he's talking about here. And he was removing the two door walls on that side, replacing them with two windows. Um, he's got it labeled as gray siding, white clad Marvin windows. I'm assuming those are wood, but clad with either vinyl or uh, aluminum. And Mr. Zacharias should probably clarify that for you. The wood inside of white cladding, or I, I think it's aluminum, or yeah, I think it's aluminum on the outside. Okay. It's a, like I said, it's the same exact type of windows we have throughout the rest of the house. Okay. And we don't have an elevation of the other side. So that would be the one side that we have. Yeah, the other side, there, there's no windows. Just like, uh, just there's nothing changing to that side. There's no windows there now. And we're just keeping that wall as is. Well, there you mean there was no windows there prior to the demo, is what you're saying? Yes. Right. Okay. So this is what we have that he's gone over, and this is what he's submitted. And again, we had the photos. So if there's any other questions or anybody wants to see anything, if not, I'll put this back to a view of the people. Okay. Uh, I have a, I do have a question, Hank. Yes, sir. Uh, the rendering is showing some sort of um, covering on the posts, but everywhere else are just labeled as six inch posts, which I believe is what we're looking at in this uh, partially existing structure right now. Uh, yeah. What are those, what's the treatment of those posts? I mean, it just indicates six inch post. Yeah, to, yeah, to your point, it, it, right now it's a six inch post, but what we're going to do is wrap it in uh, a finished wood, you know, just like a trim to to kind of beef it up a little bit and you know just paint it white again our plans only show a six by six post we don't show it you know what it would look like being beefed up so the actual documentation on that's a little bit remiss so whatever clarification you would feel comfortable with and to the extent you would feel comfortable with any um mr zach rice is going to have to explain what he wants So, um, Steve, why don't we just go ahead and we're just going to roll through the, the commissioners and get a chance to ask some questions and better understand it. Steve, since you were speaking, why don't you go ahead and be first? Okay, well, um, part, of my, part of my questioning, which was kind of half addressed, was the, the structure that was demolished and when it was built. And... Um, because it didn't look like it was original to the house. I guess that's been addressed a little bit, 
that it wasn't original, but no one can really put their finger on uh, the issue of when it might have been built. Hank, you said that, that it had tile. Did it look like it was tile circa the 20s or 19, like a pubic style tile in there? It was somewhere was it... in between. It, it probably wasn't original, but I don't have any permitting or documentation as to when exactly that went on. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the tile that was in there, uh, so in the uh, main entrance of the house, um, it wasn't a, a Pawabic, but it looked like a Pawabic, but it was a, a flint fiance tile that we had uh, in the front. They tried to find a modern version of it and tried matching that in the back, in that back room. So, um, you know, it definitely doesn't look the same, but they tried. So you think that the tile that was installed on that floor came sometime after the construction of the, uh, the main part of the house or else you, yeah. you're oh, thinking that maybe the tile would have matched in that room to your foyer? I mean, that's why I, I would assume if it, was, if it was done back in the 20s, I'm sure it would have matched, but I, I would guess it was done, I, I don't know, anywhere between the 70s and 90s. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> outside of... Um, some of the detail, uh, I really don't have any questions. I had, de I had a question about the detailing on the on the pillars, which was kind of, you, you were kind of vague about it. I'd like to see some drawings and some better representation. And I think that the siding is a little, is a little um, vague also. And I'd like to see if anything, maybe some samples or some uh, additional detail on that. And I assume the roof is to, to match the, um, the balance of the other roof on the house. Yep. Yeah, it's like a black shingle. Mm -hmm. And okay. then the siding, I, 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 we didn't pick out a siding, so I mean, I'm totally open to. I could do a cement board. I could do. I mean, the vinyl was on there, but I was going to lean towards, you know, like a, a more of a something more sustainable than a vinyl, like a cement board or. Um, well, the point is that we just need to have the uh, a, a pretty specific specification on it, and uh, we're not here to tell you what you should be putting there. But you're, I think, it would I'd feel a little more comfortable uh, knowing a little bit more about it. Uh, I guess that's I'm, I'm kind of confused with this hearing then because I'm, I'm looking to get your approval to do this, but you're telling me I could do what I want. So then, what do I need to approve no. for? No, I'm I think saying that you Mr. need to Zacharias explain what you want, and then we'll we'll deliberate upon the plans that are presented to us. You know, for example, you know, we we're talking about siding. Like, I don't. You, you tell me what siding I need to put on there, where it's gonna, you know, appease a historic district. So, so yeah. just just yeah. I'm gonna intervene just real quick. So, for example, when we look at gray siding, you know, typically we we want to know what the exposure is. We want to know, you know what the exposure is, is it four, six, you know, there, those are there's some things we're looking for. You've got um, some notes here with, um, you know, these, the six by six post. So is that just a pressure treated wood post and it's not clad? You didn't provide the detailing to, to see that. Um, the, the way the windows rendered, you don't tell me if you're doing edge trim or not. Um, are you mitering the sides of the, the siding as they go around the corner? Is this all going to be mitered? So, so, so again, how do I need to do it? Well, I mean, well, like I said, you know, the, the rest of the house is brick. So, you know, obviously it's going to be the, uh, you know, is there a right or wrong answer? Well, I, I don't necessarily think there is. We're not, it's not our, our, um, our duty to uh, be designers. Um, we have the, the standards and guidelines, which talk about, um, uh, looking at the design and about understanding if it's an appropriate to the historic resource. We're not here to pick every last nuance of it. We're supposed to be presented with something and then deem whether it's compatible and appropriate. And, and the, the struggle that your questions you're getting are because there's not enough information to sort of uh, uh, understand the details. So we don't fully understand what's going to be constructed. Did I'm I gonna, say that correct, Hank? Yeah, I think at this point, um, what 
Mr. Zacharias has presented is a six by six post period. So if he's talking about any detailing, you would either have to supply a, some type of documentation of the detailing or you're no, voting no, or, no, you know, no, explain no, it well, how about or, this? You're, or you're, or you're voting on a post. Right. And I was going to say, since a drawing shows a post, is, is that, a, is that acceptable? I think each person we're going to, uh, why don't uh, Steve, do you, let's just, I'm going um, to pass the, the baton on. I'm sure that there's some other questions that some of the other commissioners will have and, <laughs> and uh, it'll kind of flush out. It's probably some more of the questions that I had. I think, uh, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm happy to move on. Perfect. Jim, why don't you go next? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I echo the same sentiment. I mean, I think what we need to see is um, more detail on what's being proposed. Um, I think you have a, uh, there's a delta, or, you know, difference between what we see in this rendering, uh, which is pretty fuzzy, um, but still it looks different than the, um, you know, the, the two-dimensional elevations that have been so Those, those two-dimensional elevations are, I guess, intended to be like a construction, more of a construction drawing. So I could give it to my contract and say, okay, here, build this. Then once that's built, we yeah. can either, you know, paint this, under, 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 like a, 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 you know, again, once it's done, I'm sure I'll either put something around the six by six or I'll just paint the six by six and put like trim on the bot top and bottom to you know make it look you know good. So when you say I'll either do this or that, that's that's where we get nervous because we don't have a firm understanding of, of what's actually being proposed. So what we would like to see is the construction drawing, not just of the framing and you know the, the major pieces that capture the scope and the cost for your contractor, but We'd also like to see detailed drawings that indicate what those trim profiles are proposed to be. Um, like Chris was saying, you know, what, what's the treatment around the windows, et cetera. So um, those are the kinds of things that I like to see. I, I would say though, I mean, as in, in um, this is on the back of your house. Um, I have one question, which is unclear to me whether the, the addition here steps, uh, I think it would be to the south of the uh, northwest corner. So as, as you come around the side of the house, is there a turn and then the addition starts or does it, it extend straight along that um, existing north wall? So that's one question I have aside from the detail issue. And uh, then the, also- uh, Maybe a, a maybe an 18 inch step off the back of the house. Okay, so we'd like to see that in floor plan and actually get that get a dimension that, that shows us exact, exactly what that is. Uh, if you look at the uh, the survey, you could probably see it on the survey. Actually, yeah, you don't. Is, that's okay. There, that's the, what, what we'd like to see is a, a plan that is, is um, you know, that, that's the survey is telling me what where the old wall was. Um, you, you wouldn't get a survey of something that hasn't been built yet. So that's, that's what we need to understand. Well, like I said, that, that, um, that, that would be something that is, that, is, that is a direction to your contractor on where that wall was going to end up. No, that, that wall's already built. It's already there. It's been there. The, walls, the wall placement has not changed. From the, from the original okay. structure that was there, the, 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 if you want to say the footprint did not change whatsoever. The roof is basically failed so I, I ripped it off and we were going to put this uh, pitch roof on because obviously the flat roof isn't isn't good so the the, the existing walls are the existing walls that were there from before I bought the house okay thank you for that clarification we'd also like to see what is the the, the paver material um, we, we can't just tell you you need to use pavers or concrete um, but what I was going to say is, I think that in general, the, the to me, this is this is kind of an acceptable format and general shape, but we just need more detail to make an uh, appropriate determination. So, you know, Hank, I think we'll, at the end here, we'll get to whether or not we are voting to, um, you know, on, on the plan as presented, which is less information, or, you know, we get into providing any, uh, you know, direction you from an administrative side but i think i think really right either that e right jim either that or you can do a conditional approval with the detail for the posts or whatever you were uncomfortable with coming back at a later date and it would allow him to you know close it in and then right. you know you have the detail for the other type of things that's going to be up to the commission yeah 
that's all I have. Thank yeah, you. Which, which, which is fine. I, I think I'm, I'm more stressed out about having this wide open. I mean, there's no roof there right now. So it's, there's a makeshift roof and with, especially with spring coming, I want to try to get this closed off and I'll be more than happy to get the details of, you know, everything else is, you know, we just get the structure up and uh, sealed up. Jim, are, are you done with your comments for now? Yeah, that's all I had, Chris. Thanks. Okay. Robert, how about some comments from you? Um, questions for me. Hank said that the demo was done without permitting. And does that indicate that the construction was also done without permitting? That is correct. Has that construction been um, approved now? It's not at a point where a building permit's been issued for it. And I can't issue a permit until I have approval from the HDC for the form and configuration that it's going to take. Got it. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank you, Robert. Um, Mark. Um, okay. I have one concern here. Um, I see that the house was built in 1927 and we have a photograph uh, of what the rear of the house looked like before the addition. The addition we know was put on in 1986. Is that correct? No, we, there, there's really no date, but that's that could be a safe assumption. Yeah, there, there's no documentation when that addition was put on. But it was, are, it was after Mark, the, for, after for clarification, the, Mark, are you talking about the kitchen addition with yes, the brick? Okay, that was put on in 2016, 2017. Okay, that one. Okay, so we have a photograph of what what the the, um, the rear of the house looked like before that addition was put on, but we have no idea when that photograph was taken. So was it taken before that... Um, no, the, the, all of the photographs. So the first, the first photograph was taken when we first bought the house in, I think it was like 2000 fall of 2015, 16. So that was like before we moved in, we were just kind of taking pictures of you know the house, the property, and everything. So yeah, that 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 first picture was like four and a half years old. Okay, with with regard to the structure that's been demolished. We don't have any idea when that was built, do we? We do not at this point. So for all we know, it could be could have been built in 1970 or earlier and therefore have historic significance of its own. Um, how do we treat an unknown like that? At, at this point, Mark, I think what you have to do is you have to treat it as an addition. And the reason for that is, is because it's demolished, it's over 50% demolished. So I think you need to look at it as an addition. And the reason for that is, is that you, you, it allows you to take into context what is there, what was there, and what is proposed. And then you get to decide on whether or not that's appropriate for that structure. And if you feel that the part of the house that was there that was demolished is fine, you can also have it put back the same way. You can have it put back with a flat roof. You can allow the pitch roof as shown in the plans. You have a lot of latitude as to, far, as to what you can do with that. But the plan before you is what he's asking for. Okay, got it. Uh, is that all you have, Mark? Yeah, that's it. Louise. Hey, um, well, I guess I, I'll kind of echo what um, Mr. Zacharias, what you've already heard from a lot of the other commissioners. Um, the key to success with us is more detail rather uh, than less detail. Um, you know, uh, in regards to the siding, you know, which do, which do you prefer? Do you prefer a hardy plank or a painted wood? Um, so that kind of detail is something that we need. I noticed that on um, one of the uh, 
draw the scale drawing that you have here, um, the artist rendering the um, the front um, facing side of the open part of the porch um, is different. The detailing is different over the window. It almost looks like it's going to be some kind of half timbering with that vertical piece that's in there, and that's not on the um, not on the other drawing. Your artist drawing. Yeah, yeah. And for um, so the the artist drawing was done a few years ago when we were doing this like big architectural plan. So okay, um, I didn't have access to having them update it. So I just used what I had and just kind of hand drew the, the rest. Okay. So so um, you're basically I apologize for the I apologize for the the disconnect in um you know details of the rendering and the actual drawings. Yeah, and that I mean and that's a small thing and that's something um that you know that that's easily um, remedied during discussion at one of these um, meetings. I certainly understand the wanting the pitch roof and Michigan weather, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So I understand wanting the covered part of the patio as well. Um, but as Steve was saying, you know, there are a whole lot of different kinds of pavers. Um, and so we don't know which one it is that you want to install. Um, and so you're acting as, as the architect, right? Because these are, are these are all drawings that you have um, for the most part, yeah. Done. Okay. Um, so you you're using a licensed contractor to build the rest of it. Right. Okay. Okay, that's all good. Huh. So you know when it came, when it comes to you know for example you mentioned that you know painted wood or hardy board. Mm -hmm. Because it's a historic house, I guess does it, is it does it matter? I mean, I, maybe wood would be better. I, you know, I guess that's what I'm looking for you, your guidance because I don't want to come back in, in a month and say, hey, I want to you know here's what I have in mind for the the signing and the windows. And you're like, yeah, that's not historic appropriate. But I'm 100 flexible on what what it takes to make it historic appropriate. Well, um, it it you know it um, not that it you know exclusively matters but it is on the back of the house and we want to make sure that it's something that's you know you're going to like and that's going to be around for a long time so um so i mean my suggestion would be to come in with you know i i want to use i'm planning to use uh painted wood however um may, maybe hardy board costs less so if the yeah. commission would be okay with that you know that would be my second choice, um, but you know, kind of to leave it all open-ended um, to us is a little bit uh, kind of out of the scope of, of what we do. I guess I don't want to say, I I want to say it open-ended, but you know, I guess I'm again looking for guidance of what's more, you know, what, what's going to get approved faster. Because, like I said, I'm not stuck on having you know a you know, for the window trim, for example, if I have to do the signing that goes all the way around, you know, right up to the window, great. If I have to do a two inch board around it, great. You know, I, you know. I, right, I, well, you know, you've already said that you're gonna buy the windows that match the rest of the house. Right. So what's the trim on the rest? It's all, on the rest all of the brick. Window? It's all brick. Oh, brick. Right to the windows. Okay, so, you know, I mean, I don't know if we have enough details um, to the chair's point, Chris's point, you know, how is everything going to be joined together and how are the posts going to be wrapped and yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll provide those details. I'll, I'll uh, be more thorough with, with the, those things. Yeah. That, I mean, that really, that really is the key to success. You know, any, any question can be answered. Right. Right. As the plans are drawn now, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, as the plans are drawn now, there's no trim boards. So you're looking at, uh, you know, typically there's a one by four or some form of trim around the windows in a sided house. And that's what the siding would die into. That also allows uh, something to cover the nailing flange that would go on the windows for a new construction project. So. Um, the reality of that is, is that we really don't have um, a detail on that. 
So one thing, and, and I, I sh just so that Chris can get to his comments because he hasn't commented yet. One other option that you have is you can approve it in concept, which would allow him to put the roof on it. And then he can come back with more detail as to the windows, as to the siding, as to the pavers, as to the columns. Um, but that would allow a roof to go on. That's up to you, um, Chris. Hey, that's a, that's a, so I guess I'm up for my comments, huh? Yes, sir. Um, You're the chair. <laughs> so uh, in, in concept, I mean, I guess um, I don't have a, a huge problem with the overall massing and scale of the gesture. Um, the thing that I'm struggling with, and, you know, it obviously um, we, we don't know the existing structure, the date and whether or not, you know, so we're treating it as an addition. So, um, you know, the gable form is different than sort of what you have on your front porch, all those sorts of things, which call it out as a different structure. Sorry about the dog. Um, and um, I, I do, I get a little trouble just where, you know, the windows, the proportions of the house are, are really nice. The, even on the front porch, you know, the layer detail, there's a lot of attention to detail on this house. I would love to see that same attention to detail translate into this back porch to better understand what we're approving. But um, from a scale standpoint, I could get behind approving it so that means structure goes up, Hank, and then the cladding comes later, right? So they might be able to, the shingles are fine with me. And I guess I don't quite understand if the peak matches the, you know, the adjacent roof overhang that was on the, the um, addition, six foot addition off the kitchen, some of those minor details, but overall the scale doesn't bother me. So I could get behind that. Um, and then I guess um, the details, I would love to see more on that to approve how you finish it. Proportions of windows would be nice if there's some consistency with the remainder of the house versus maybe a grab bag of different yeah, types of uh, windows. No, we're definitely being consistent. Like I said, we're, we're going out of our way to make sure we get the same type of windows that we've had. And the reason why we are going with another, just a single door wall, because we want it to be as tall as the other door wall that we put in there. So we're definitely going to make it look like it's part of the house, not as just add on. You know, you know I, I think I agree with most of you guys where I, you know, it, it's sad to see a, an addition go up where you could definitely tell it's an addition, but you know, we're trying to do our best to make it look as consistently as possible with the rest of the house. Um, so um, I guess at this time, I think it's time for public participation. Is that correct, Hank? Yes, you do have to have public participation on each item on the agenda. So I'd ask um, if anyone from the public would like to speak, please go ahead, um, state your name and your address, please. And then your, uh, the floor is open for public participation to provide any feedback on the applicant the application. No takers. Okay, at this time, then I guess I'll close the public participation. Um, so Hank, um, just to, to clarify, we've got, you know, we've got an option that says we, we approve the, the, the proportions, right? Um, and then yep. uh, let's, let's the framing go in place, let's uh, uh, the roofing go on, and then we can hammer out the details. Is that one option that you proposed? That's, that's one option that you have, which would be approving in concept, allow the roof to go on. Your motion is going to have to reflect exactly what you're allowing to happen. So then, Mr. Zacharias, as I understand the flow of the conversation, should that be a successful motion and approved, then Mr. Zacharias would have to come back with column detail, paver detail, window detail, trim detail, siding detail as to what it is, um, dimensions on all of that. So that would have to be, that's he would have to come back with that, and then the rest of it could be approved. Hey, could you do me one favor? Um, could yes, you sir. show me, um, I guess I don't have the photographs and I, otherwise I'd share. Could you share the photograph just real quick? I mean, the, the only yeah, concerns that me... I have is dimensionally, I don't really understand, do the eaves align, not align? Can you see so, that? Yeah, so on that one, obviously the things that I'm noticing, you know, the eave line on the addition, which is at the head of the window, looks like there's a double layer trim with the projection. How does that relate to our new addition? Do we have any construction photos right now? Yeah, it's, it's gonna carry, it's, those lines that are going across that valve will carry through to the new addition. 
and so the concern I have, Hank, is how do we capture all this and anything? That's that's my only concern. Well, and, and again, you know, the other option is, is that you can also uh, deny it for lack of information and have Mr. Zacharias come back with a detail as to whether or not he's going to continue that pine line and whether that's going to be the same. There's a gap and there's a differential there. So depending on whether he's going to continue that, if so, how is he going to continue it? And is that the pit to the roof that's going to be on the back? I think I captured that on one of the drawings where, where uh, it shows the, um, you know, the that line flowing through to the other one. I guess in plan, it implies that. The roof plan implies that the elevation doesn't provide that. And I guess the section or the side elevation implies it, but it's you know not quite. The profile of the existing house is a little off. So um, I think I've, you know, sort of, Okay, I'm, I'm done. Um, I guess at this point in time, Hank, I think we're looking for some form of motion. And I think, Hank, you've given us a, a number of different options. So I'd be looking uh, on the floor if there's any, any, uh, any more questions, any more before, I, before we get a motion from the commissioners. Uh, I'd just like to make a comment if I could, Chris. Sure. Um, I'm you know, I kind of, I kind of feel like you that I, I don't have a problem with the basic shape and dimensions and massing and the way it hooks onto the house. I'm a little bit concerned about approving something in partial and having this process, uh, this construction process, move along to the next step and not being able to approve it in its entirety because I'm, I'm concerned that there might be more delays and more gaps. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but I'm, I would be concerned if there were uh, additional delays. This structure has been sitting in this state now for a number of months, and I don't want it to progress along to some semi-completed state and not be able to have it go forward in its entirety, or at least not have the certainty of that up front, knowing that. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, a little bit, a little bit skittish on that one. Um, so, I also so, wanted. To, I'm sorry, Steve. Wanted, could okay, could well, you then to, just real quick? Do you think that? I mean, you may be able to pitch a motion that covers everything. That could be an outlet. But keep going. Sorry. Well, I was also uh, in question about if there's anything going on with this very large patio shown in the rendering that's not in any other plans. I mean, it looks like, you know, the full width of the house is covered by some sort of yeah, additional covering on the ground. And we don't really know what that is. And yeah, that's, that's still kind of, again, in, in the master plan. Uh, so what, once, you know, what, once we get this part done, then we'll move on to that. I mean, in, in one of the drawings, I don't know if it was in the ones I, I sent, but, you know, we're investigating a pool. So you know, obviously if we do that, we'll be back trying to get approval for that. So, you know, we, you know, when we had these drawings done, it was like one of those things, okay, what, what's your, what's your big wish list of what, what do you want to done? What, what do you want done on the house? And, you know, we said, okay, here's all the stuff we want then, you know, but your budget is only so much. So you have to do a little bit at a time. And then what about the tree? Is the tree going to remain there? Uh, as of now, yeah. If, if uh, well, how about this? If we end up getting a pool, we'll probably get rid of that tree. But if we Part don't, the, pool, we'll and get... again, Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, while landscape is an administrative approval for the most part, part of the problem with this one is is that it's completely unclear as to what it is. If a tree comes out and it's a healthy tree, it's going to require HCC approval. That is not an administrative approval. The second thing is is that you can only have 50% of the rear yard covered by um, accessory structures, a patio, walkways, that type of thing would be that. And while uh, this is a large lot, it could be construed based on the survey that was provided that there's an awful lot of patio that's going to be covering this backyard and it may have to have alterations per the zoning code. Well, is it um, is it safe to say that the covered patio 
uh, is like a phase one? Yes. The covered patio would fit within that, but there's other area that may be construed to be uh, like paved backyard with border gardens type of thing. And if that's the case, it's just a conjecture that that's going to go over the 50% rear yard lock coverage. But I don't have enough information to make that call right now. And it's not before you this evening. Hank, do you know if the posts that are currently installed there are installed to code, like frost, down below uh, the frost line and so on? Dwayne looked at them um, and he wanted some additional information and he and Mr. Zacharias were in communication. Um, Dwayne is our building official for those that don't know. Uh, at this point in time, I believe he was satisfied with those, but then yeah. again, um, <laughs> he doesn't have the detail or the finished detail on that and how that's going to be constructed. So regardless of which these plans that you approve may need to be altered on the structural side to appease the building official. So, just, so you're not approving two by four, two by six, you're approving, uh, you know, like the perimeter you're approving, you know, perhaps what it is, whatever the motion would reflect. And just for your information, those are 12 inch wide tubes and they're 48 inches long. So we just put them all the way, all the way down 48 inches, codes 42. So it's, um, you know, plenty deep enough. Yeah, but those right. footings, well, I'm not gonna go there cause it's not our purveyance, but there's more right. to that's those gonna have that. to satisfy the building official, not the HDC. No, I know I'm just, you know, he brought it up. So I thought I'd just let him know what's there. Chris, may I say something? Absolutely, Robert. Thank you. Um, I agree with what Steve Behrman said. And I think that issuing or permitting allowance to go forward at this point, even on a limited amount, um, might not serve us or Mr. Zacharias particularly well. It's almost giving a false start. It's like saying, go ahead, do this right now and, and come back. And when he comes back, it may not be something that we could or should or would approve, which would throw him back yet another step. So stepping forward with a full and complete plan, fully detailed as we typically require and move for or against would be most appropriate. What leaves a bad taste in my mouth is that demo was done without a permit. Construction was done without a permit. Now, uh, Mr. Zacharias knows that permits are required for these types of uh, procedures, and he didn't do it. That, to me, and makes me very uncomfortable in approving anything partial or temporary at this point. That's it. Thank you, Robert. Um, Chris, I have something. Um, so, um, Mr. Zacharias, um, so I don't have a problem with the footprint or, you know, the design, um, or anything. I'm sure, you know, when it's done, it'll look fine. Um, so, but can you tell us the state of the, um, you know, intrusion of the weather and everything right now with, um, the way the, just the, the roughing in is and as it connects to the house, is it causing um, what kind of deterioration or intrusion into the house is that causing? Uh, look, well, we haven't gotten any really heavy rain, but we have like tarps and two by fours up or in four by eight pieces of plywood up trying to keep the weather out from that area. Okay. So it is, a, you know, it's an open area, but, you know, I'm, I'm afraid once, you know, we start getting some heavy rains in the spring that if I don't have that buttoned up, you know, I will get intrusion just because it's, you know, it's a, uh, you know, as he said, it's a, it's a tiled floor and, you know, it's going to go somewhere and, it, and the house is right there. So without having any, any kind of roof on, on that structure, you know, water will get in the house. Yeah. So that. I mean, that's one of my concerns about not approving anything with, uh, you know, a secure roof over um, that area is that we don't want to cause any kind of um, 
additional or you know or unexpected damage to the uh, back of the house and it sounds like everything that needs to be um you know i guess approved are more cosmetic things so we could e easily you know like just put the roof on and you know i'll come back with all with a more detailed information about the column siding windows etc and you know at, at least i get a roof over that structure where i'm not um you know going to be at risk to the elements where it's going to cause more problems i guess mr chair just uh to add a question onto this, we're showing this as a 412 pitch roof. Is that correct, Mr. Zacharias? Yes. So from the picture that you've got uh, that's on, can you see what's on the screen right now? No. 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 Hold on. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this right here, if you take a look at this, the line that goes across, it says eight inch LVL and which would be the ridge. And then you see how this is and it sits below the windows. The question that for construction purposes, which may get back to, uh, okay, let me see what you got here. Um, sorry about this, but these all came in one way. Okay, so here the question becomes is on top of this and you see the windows and you see the representation of the original drawing. Can you get a 412 pitch in there with those windows? Yes. Yeah, he even said uh, we could get a 512, but um, just to be on the safe side, when he puts the flashing on, he wants to be away from the windows once it's flashing up. Okay. So Mr. I think Chair. we're still back to um, trying to entertain a motion. If anybody would um, like to make a motion. So Hank, how would this work? Would, it, would we um, do it, make a motion in like um, phases? Approve? You could, well, here's what you could do. You could make a motion to only allow a certain thing. You could say a motion to put the roof on it with the rest and deny the rest to come back for more information. You could deny the project in whole to come back with more information. You can allow the project in, in, um, in part, which would be the roof, deny the whole thing or approve the whole thing as drawn. Hey, Hank, one more question, just to yes, be sir. sensitive to the application funds is tabling and requesting more detail that's not acceptable or it is just so they don't have to file another application fee or what is that um typically what, that I, what I would suggest is is that unless the applicant asks for the table then you would deny okay thank um, you so that that would be clear but he would have to ask for the table before you could grant it so we're still looking for a motion You might want to explore that with Mr. Zacharias. So Mr. Zacharias, just to be sensitive since you do pay an application fee. And I was just asking, um, obviously you've heard a lot of commentary. Um, there is an option that you could request to be tabled. So your application remains in place and you do get pushed to the next meeting. So it just prevents you from having to file another application and then you can um, update the information accordingly uh, you've heard the comments and maybe that should give you some direction. And then um, at that point in time, ask for that versus, you know, being either approved or denied, which means you would have to reapply. Right. Um, well, if, if I don't get the terminology right, but I, I'm hoping to get the uh, approved for concept where I could continue on with the roof and then I'll come back with the rest of the details, you know, for approval. <laughs> I just wanted to let, explain what the option was. So thank you. So um, anyone so Chris, care? If Sorry. that was the pleasure of the commission, then what the commission would have to do is approve the installation of the roof as detailed um, or not detailed, and then uh, deny 
everything else until it comes back to the next meeting or table it table the rest of it till the next meeting if that's what mr zacharias is asking the commission to do thank you so i'm still looking for a motion Um, well, I, I guess I will make a motion um, because I'm worried about the um, damage not having um, any kind of roof on what's there um, is going to cause uh, that resource. Um, I think in concept, um, the design works fine. Um, it's uh, differentiated from the original historic uh, details of the house um, that that pitch roof um, does appear at least on the back of the house. So I don't think that's a problem. I would say it um, satisfies um, standards one. Um, and I guess I would say nine um, because it does um, differ differentiate from the old. Um, the other addition is already gone. Um, and this would be for only uh, the Roughing, roughing in of the structure, which would include the roof, and uh, the applicant will need to come back with all other details regarding the windows and the siding and the wrapping of the columns. Um, and so that would be my motion. Thank you. Uh, can, do we have a second? Okay, we didn't get a second, Hank. So I'm I'm going to have to entertain, or have uh, can can. Is there anybody else who would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that the project be denied on the basis that there is insufficient information to make an appropriate analysis and decision. Uh, this. Do I have anybody who will second that motion? Well, second. So you got that, Hank? Jim? Who was the second? Jim. I think it was okay. Jim and Mark, but Jim sounded like first, I think. But Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do a roll call vote. Um, so I'll go reverse order just to mix it up. Jim, you're first. Uh, aye. Yes. Steve. Aye. Mark. Aye. Robert. Aye. Luis. Aye. And I'm going to vote aye. Okay, Louise, you were an aye? No. No, nay. You were nay. Okay. So that's uh, four nays, one, excuse me, four yays, one nay. So the motion passes, which well, denied the application. Or there's five nays, or there's five yays for the motion. So basically, oh, yeah. Jack Rice will have to come back at the next meeting with plans with the details uh, that the HTC has told them that he would need in order to have a successful project. All right, thank you, Mr. Zacharias. We look forward to a resubmission. Um, Hank, if it's okay, I'm gonna move on to our second agenda item today. It is, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to move on to the matter of an addition walkway alteration and window replacement for the Odell residence at 26857 York. And um, I see Mr. Odell is on the phone. I would assume that you would like to present your, your application. Yeah, no, it's uh, great to meet everyone. Um, yeah, I think I, so I'd submitted the materials to, to Hank um, in, the, in the city. Um, so I, I don't have any, anything printed in front of me or, or anything to, Share, but I don't think did you do you happen to have that um like the images and stuff or or should I with the I, screen share? I do or you can share it if you have it, but I do have it. Cool, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and screen share it. Uh let's see here. Okay, can everybody see that? Nope. Nope. No. Try this again. It's being temperamental. How's that? Much better. Okay. 
Good. All right. So, Mr. Odell, what I'll do is I'll scroll down at your direction. Yeah, yeah. You can just scroll to show that first photo. Um, yeah. So, just in the um, there's a back sunroom area, and I'm looking to keep the entire structure as is. But uh, the the screens and frame themselves, it's a uh, it's sort of a worn, rusted aluminum frame. Um, the door is kind of coming coming apart there. Um, some of the screen. So I'm just basically looking to replace it with a black aluminum framing. Um, and it the door would be in the same place. It would be the same three panel, or sorry, four paneled when you look at the front there. Um, so yeah, pretty much like the same thing, but just a replaced black aluminum um, with a more sort of black tinted um, screen, like a mesh screen. Um, yeah, that's the, the idea. And then doing a, um, I just have sort of a sample right here, but just doing a black slate floor in there. So right now it's sort of uh, old carpet. Um, so I'd rip it out and put in the slate floor. So, uh, but yeah, everything else would, would remain as is. Um, and yeah, so that, that's the yeah, general idea on the on the porch. That'll show the carpet that you're discussing. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there's also carpet at the front door. Yeah. Oh, the, well, we have the photos up if you wouldn't mind addressing everything for them. Yep. Yeah, so I just have um, sort of a I'm just looking to do like a white stone um, at the front that would look very similar to the the tint of the of the house as well. So a similar color palette, um, but yeah, just kind of take out the the carpet there and replace it. So something that would look look similar to this um, that would be in sort of a travertine, very simple um, type of aesthetic. Mode. But uh, yeah, so those are the the two. Um, two projects. Thank you very much. Hank, Chris, would, you like, would you like me to keep these up? There are some samples. Why, why don't can... you, yeah, why don't you keep that up while you give, you know, if you have, you can give your report if there's anything you want to refer to with the images and then yeah. they might be helpful for the commissioner's questions as well. I mean, basically the carpet issue and removing the carpet is really nothing that would be problematic or that the city could see problematic because the carpet wasn't there originally. So if that carpet was to come off, the only place that it would really affect anything is on the walkway. So without knowing what condition the concrete underneath is, that may become problematic or it may not be. If the concrete is left there, is it in good shape? Is it not in good shape? Um, the travertine tile, uh, may or may not be period for this house and may or may not go to this house. And actually the expertise on these type of structures actually goes to Robert because he kind of lives in one of these. So um, in as far as the time and the period and the material selection, um, he might want to comment on that, but that's what he's looking at. As far as the screens, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Odell, but what you're saying is that the screens are pretty much rotted out and you're looking to just replace that. The addition or the porch as a whole is remaining. It's just filling the gaps back in with newer uh, material that is, uh, in, that is uh, consistent with what's there now for the most part, but also is not rusted through and it has integrity. Is that correct? Sorry, I was on mute. Yep, that is, that is all correct. And the, um, yeah, and I would also just love to hear from, from Robert as well on that front entrance, um, a recommendation of a different different material that you know feels is more um, accurate to the original architecture of the house. Um, yeah, and I don't know that that's not accurate. Um, I just don't know what's under there. So it's hard for me to comment from the staff position. Mm -hmm. Other than, you know, I mean, you may take that out and the concrete may be perfectly fine. I don't, I don't have a, any conjecture on that. So let me just do this so that you can see, for example, this would be one sample.
that would be the aluminum sample. And then this, sorry about that, wrong arm. This would be the type of tile. And again, the finish would be a different color. Is it smooth or is it uh, polished or? It's a slight textured finish. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Hank. Let's, um, why don't we start with uh, Louise this time? Hey, um, <laughs> well, I certainly understand um, why you would want to do uh, what it is you're proposing. Um, I don't have a problem with any of, uh, any of it really, um, except for the travertine. Um, and uh, was going to ask Robert about that as well. Do you have you um, tried to? Sorry, I'm trying to find you in the little square. Um, <laughs> have you um, tried to, you know, lift up any of the carpet and find out what's under there? Is it all? It's all glued down. No, I have not. But that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, yeah. At this point, if it's in good shape, maybe you just need yeah. some good adhesive removal. Um, you know. Um, but other than that, uh, now that's a great house. So I think it's a nice project, good project. That's it for me. Robert. Thank you. Uh, Alex, are you, um, are you Floyd? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the company that, yeah, that I have in uh, Detroit, yep. One of my favorites, thank you. And um, thank you for Floyd. <laughs> um, so I know that you'll get this completely. Um, the travertine um, is fine up material as it is, it's antithetical to the movement. And the modern, modern, modern modernistic movement was about purity of materials, um, clean lines, simplicity, uh, without any confusion at all. And adding the travertine is adding a layer of decorative material, which simply is inappropriate and doesn't belong. Concrete is what was there, is there, it's just been concealed hmm. and should remain there. And you can certainly, if you want to enhance that, concrete can be dyed, um, which would be a very, very nice treatment. The HDC has absolutely nothing to do with um, color uh, of any sort whatsoever on any surface. So dyeing it is always an option. But um, it's a great house. It's one of my favorite houses in the city. I'm glad you got it and enjoy it. Oh, cool. Thank you. No, yeah, I appreciate that perspective. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I was trying to understand the what what would just sort of feel blend in naturally with the house. And that was that was my best shot. But I think to yeah, just going with the with the concrete, I agree, would be nice. Mark, you're up. Um, I really have no questions or comments. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve. Uh, I'm basically fine. Uh, Hank, I did want to ask you with the porch and whatever uh, Mr. Odell decides to do with the flooring in there, because it's, is that really considered to be inside the structure and not really within our purview? the covering whatever is done in the on the floor of the porch that would be correct so um i you know i think that the uh i can understand why you're doing everything and i'm i'm basically fine with everything i'm um kind of with the others on the uh the travertine to cover the porch and the steps in the front i think that it's uh, worthy of inspecting what's underneath there and seeing if it's in good shape and trying to restore what might be there, uh, probably be more appropriate uh, in my in my thoughts. Thank That's you, it. Steve. Jim. Uh, yeah, I echo the same comments on the front porch. Um, and just to clarify, uh, I mean, we saw a photo of a walkway with the, the travertine. You're not you're not making any changes to your front walk. This is just a reference image for the front porch. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Great. Okay, and then um, since we don't have the opportunity to physically see your, your back porch tile, I would just, as a uh, word of caution, 
um, that will get wet in rain, make, or just make sure that it's not too smooth, that it becomes a slip hazard, just an experience thing. So other, otherwise, no questions. Looks great. Um, I have no further discussion to add. So um, at this point in time, I'd like to see if there's anyone from the public who'd like to speak about this application. Hi, go, go ahead and state, uh, please state your name and your address. Hi, uh, my name is Jeff App, and I live at 26881 York. And uh, Mary and I are Alex's neighbors to the west on the same side of the street. And we're delighted with what he wants to do with his house. Um, I should say that just removing the carpet <laughs> will right be a direction. step in the right direction. <laughs> I, I have to, uh, I, I can't resist observing that, that Dave and Ernie Darsky, who owned the house before the people who had owned it for a short while and were fixing it up a little bit, um, probably were covering a variety of sins with that carpet. <laughs> but uh, I think removing the carpet will be a step in the right direction for sure. And, it, and that's the other things they certainly need to make. You know, it needs some loving and thoughtful care. And Alex is, is doing just that. So we, we support what he's trying to do with the house. Thank you very much for commenting. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, is there anybody else who'd like to comment on the application? Okay, at this time, Hank, I guess we can close uh, the public participation. All right. Uh, is there any more uh, questions or comments from any of the commissioners? Okay, hearing none, I'm looking to entertain some, a motion. We, we kind of have two items, right, Hank? You can uh, probably, based on the comments of the commission, you're probably best off um, splitting it into two and perhaps taking the uh, uh, window inserts as one and then uh, the carpet removal and travertine is another. Um, he could take the carpet off and then inspect that. And if for some reason the concrete's all broken up or Mr. Odell has a problem, then of course he's certainly welcome to come back if conditions change. Or if uh, he decides to take Robert's suggestion about a dye or a coloring or a stain of some kind, um, that would not need HDC approval and he could feel free to proceed with that. But if you split it that way, then he can at least order his materials. Okay. So I'm still looking for a motion. Um, mo motion to approve the uh, back porch as, I don't know, I need to see my manual, um, as submitted. Um, so actually, Hank, if we order, if we um, approve a, um, Certificate of appropriateness for the back porch. Do we still need to quote the sections, the guidelines? You would still have to reference the standard. Try to hint. Yeah, uh, motion. Thanks, guys. I don't do motions very often. Um, motion to approve as submitted, uh, referencing standard two of the uh, Department of Interior guidelines. I'm looking for a second. A oh, second, yeah. I think that was Robert. So um, let's do a roll call. Uh, Louise? Uh, yay. Robert? Yay. Mark? Yay. Steve? Yay. And Jim? Yay. He made the motion, but just got to go on the record. And I'm a yay as well. And now you need the motion for the uh, other portion. So, Jim, you're on a roll. Why don't you keep going? <laughs> um, I, so, let's see here. Um, motion to deny. Um, the travertine. Um, 
but but allow the removal of the carpet, right? That's not a historic material, right? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> okay. not a... Okay. Right. Um, but remove the carpet as it is not historic. Thanks, Chris. We need a standard or something, right, Hank? Yeah. Why don't you help toss us a bone, Hank? Help us out. <laughs> yeah, come on, buddy. Okay. Uh, basically, you could look for the standards that say uh, that he would have um, introduce a false sense of uh, his time. So under uh, standard nine. Yeah. As it uh, would not protect the entirety of the, of the structure. Perfect. Can we have a second? I'll second. I think Louise beat you, Robert. Okay. Uh, Luis, go ahead. What's your vote? Oh, yay. Robert? Yay. Mark? Uh, I'm having a little trouble here. Was that a motion to deny? Deny the travertine, but allow the removal of the carpet. Yay. Steve? Yay. Jim? Yay. And I'm a yay as well. So thank you. So thank you, Mr. O'Dell, I hope, and uh, we look forward to seeing the improvements. Chris, right. I have a question for Mr. O'Dell before he leaves. Sure. When is that showroom going to reopen? I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping for the summer. Is he gone? Uh, yeah, hopefully. The summer. Open. Yeah, that's the plan. Great. Yeah. Great. No, thank. Well, thank thank you very much. Um, it sounds like no one's going to miss the carpet. So. <laughs> It, but, um, no, thanks as well to neighbors for showing up too so that's awesome <laughs> all right thanks hank let's move on to our last um it's a matter of an addition to the okay how do i pronounce the name please before i butcher it ferulo ferulo, ferulo. okay mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't gonna be that bad that's good to the ferulo <laughs> residents at 26705 york um, and uh, so who would, who's going to present the application, I guess, let me see, there's two people here. So is it going to be the architect or the homeowner who's presenting tonight? It's actually going to be the contractor. It's going to be the contractor. Oh, <laughs> here we go. You got me off guard. Yes. So, Chris, before we proceed, I need to say something. Sure. Um, I have a social relationship with Sarah Ferullo, so I'm going to recuse myself from this. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Hey, Sarah. Okay, so um, let me see. Mark, I think you are presenting. So could you just state your name and your company and hop into the presentation? Sure, it's Mark Rosenblatt, Huntington Home Building Company. Um, we are looking at putting a master suite addition uh, and uh, sort of tweaking the the rear entry entryway, the mudroom, for Drew and Sarah, so that they can take this house that they've recently purchased and moved into, and make it something that they can live in for a very long time, giving them a, a first floor master that they can move to if and when needed. Um, also allows them to have guests over here and there. Um, and have a place to put them and, and for those people to sleep, shower, things like that. Um, the, the majority of the reason to do it is so that they can, let's just say, grow old in this house and have this, uh, this master suite on the main floor. The challenge we were met with was that the existing home had an addition put on it after or I'm sorry, prior to it being deemed a historic home. It's, it's a hardy board siding and it was put sort of over a porch and it's a little bit awkward. It has a second floor above it. So we're kind of stuck not being able to pull it down. What we are trying to do is use what we have and make it look, at, make it look moving forward um, using the same materials incorporating the materials of the existing home before this addition, plus the materials of the addition that was put on again before it was historic 
Um, and then in order to try to assist the look of the home as it is now, there's a flat roof that's on the back uh, of the home directly above this addition that was put on. We'd like to, to remove that flat roof and give it you know, more of a hip style um, to match. And that's in the west rear elevation. I'm sure that Hank will put them up soon. Um, to match the hip style that we propose to do on the lower edition, which is the master suite. Um, in terms of materials, we're obviously planning to match and use the same materials, the same finishes that the existing house has. The existing house does have aluminum clad windows, their casement, and therefore move forward and, and match those windows with new aluminum clad windows on the proposed new portion. Um, yeah, there was a big question about the sort of the chimney treatment because we are adding a second chimney and you'll see on the prints, we're doing everything we can to make the two chimneys, albeit one smaller than the other, look exactly the same. Um, and then, uh, yeah, for the most part, that's sort of where we're at. We've hopefully detailed everything as much as we can. As you mentioned, the architect is here with us too. So questions certainly can be directed to me or to uh, Joe, the architect, or to the homeowner. Thank you. Perfect, thanks so much. Hank, would you like to um, certainly uh, pull up the drawings and give yeah, your review? Kind of where I'm going with this. Awesome. Uh, let me see. Okay, so uh, basically what I want to do is kind of, well, I'll, I'll kind of go around the house here. There are some photos of the existing residents. Can everybody see that? No. Nope. No. Okay. <clears throat> Seems like we always got to do this twice today, huh? How about now? Yep. Yes. Okay. So what we're looking at here is in the top left, this is the area that Mark Rosenblatt was talking about in through here. Um, it shows the existing two-story addition with hardy plank, which creates a couple different issues in that one, it doesn't have a brick ledge. Well, it has a small brick ledge, um, but it only goes up a little bit and then it's all hardy plank. So it's already hardy plank. So making the whole thing brick and matching the existing brick and grout would be somewhat problematic. So what they're proposing is, is to use this area here, the deck comes out, the addition comes back. This is a little bit further addition area down here. If you take a look at the bottom left and the bottom left area here um, shows you a better proportionate to what the house is. So you're looking at approximately 50% of the rear of the house that has it and here's a rear quarter which shows you the existing back porch area. This shows you a little bit different uh, portion of the house, which is the back and the front. So this shows you the front area of the house right here and it shows you the drive and it shows you the front view with the chimney. And then I'm going to go back to, to try to pull up for you the plans for what are proposed here. Hank, while you're looking for that, I do also want to, I, I forgot to mention, you know, some of the, uh, one of the big things I know that, that the commission wants to see is a, a step in of the addition of a, a foot, a couple of feet. And the reason we didn't do that is simply because it would, in our opinions, make the tie-in between this new addition and the older addition very, very awkward. Um, not just for the living space on the inside, but for the look on the outside. So what we were trying to do was just go straight back from the existing structure. So here's the floor plan. 
Um, everybody's got the blueprints, but I'm putting it up there for neighbors or anybody that might be interested in it. So this shows the basic layout. This area here is Hank, being, we're not seeing it. Yo, you're not seeing this? No, nope. we're just listening, looking at you talking about it. Wow. Okay, hold on a second here. How about now? Yep. Okay. So this area here that you couldn't see before that I was talking about, this is where Mark is talking about the line coming straight back because the existing line comes straight back. This area over here is currently that porch that we showed in the existing photographs, which is now being incorporated into a mudroom for this area here. This kind of gives you an illustration of the back of the house and the proposed uh, changes to it. So the existing elevations are across the top. So when you look at the rear of the house, which is the west elevation here, and you go to the west elevation here, this is what's happening. So you now have a little porch, you have a column over here, you have a flat roof that's introduced, where on the original you have an aluminum with a couple posts and that's not incorporated into the addition. This part here is existing. This part here will be new. This part here will also be new in that it's, uh, you know, it's going to be completely redone. Uh, note on the side here, the south elevation. If you take a look at the south elevation here, you can see the addition part on here. You can see where it goes over here. The chimney, including the wash is replicated however smaller, so it has a similar detail to the original one, um, but it's smaller and subservient on the back portion of the house. Also, they've gone ahead and they've done art glass, which will also replicate what's on the existing house, um, but the differentiation is in the siding to the materials. And again, it also references the problems that they have because they have existing siding on the house. When you take a look at this particular elevation, which is the north side elevation, and you take a look at that, this is what you're looking at here. This represents the aluminum roof over that along with the porch. This represents what's going to be there assuming approval from this. It shows here the windows on that side, the porch, the column, and how far this comes out, and the roof of the new addition on that side. The front elevation is simply here to show you what type of details are on the house. And it shows that what they're looking at here on the front of the house and the front of the house here is what you're seeing that's not changing, but the windows are also replicating with the mountain bars and the type of windows, which are case with windows. So the window type is consistent with what's in the house now uh, up to and including the art glass. So those are a couple of the things that we've talked about with uh, Mr. Novitsky and also with Mark Rosenblatt about the house. Um, the Ferullos have been very active in uh, the design of the house and they've come up with some detail. They're also showing their downspouts uh, and details like that so that it shows what it is. Uh, if you take a look at the south side elevation, you will see two details of a downspout together it may be possible to alter that in a way, shape or form to where you don't have the two downspouts like a couple feet apart. Um, that might be something that they might wanna consider perhaps bringing it down so there's one downspout. Uh, other than that, if there's any question, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but these are uh, aluminum clad wood windows. Is that correct, Mr. Rosenblatt? Uh, Joe? Yes, I, I believe that's true. Okay. okay. so then that would be what it is. So it is a wood window. So typically your mutton pattern with that might be like a five eighths, a seven eighths. Is that what you're looking at, Joe, for this? Yes. Okay. And then uh, your rails and styles would be consistent with what's in the house currently? Yes. Okay. Um, and again, they're mutton bars. Uh, it referenced mullions in the, in the uh, description. Um, but I don't see any windows that are really mulled together there on this edition. So I'm assuming that that's talking about the mutton bars. Um, other than that, if there's any questions while I have the plans up, Mr. Novitsky is the architect, and Mr. Rosenblatt's a contractor are here. So if there's any questions, I'm sure that they would be happy to answer it to the extent they can. And uh, I'll be happy to do it for 
whatever I can. So if you want me to keep these up for a point, Chris, or do you want me to back out of these for right now? Why, why don't you just leave them up real quick? And that okay. way, if people have questions, we can reference them. If nobody's referenced them, we can take them down, but. Absolutely, whatever's your pleasure. <clears throat> so Steve, why don't you start us off on this one? Okay, um, I think it's a good plan. Uh, and I think it works well with the house. Uh, I do have a question on the south side with the, uh, the siding there where you have uh, the, the old siding and then you have the new siding. Are you gonna just replace all that bottom part so that uh, you don't have like one uh, horizontal cut where you have them all, you know, yes. butted together? Or are you going to, so you'll replace Yes. all the siding so it's all contiguously uh yeah just that side will definitely we're, we're not going to have a, a single line there exactly we'll we'll replace all those pieces it's it's i forget how many feet it is but whatever it is yes we're going to run new long pieces all the way down to the brick correct me if i'm wrong but there's some color issues on that siding that'll be corrected when you do that yeah we're going to paint it so the whole <laughs> it's, it's not painted now it's I think that there were a few pieces that were put up at a different time. And it's that the, the sort of the greenish primer color that is so loved by everybody and yet they don't realize <laughs> it's just the primer. Right. Well, anyways, I think that it, that it works well and um, I appreciate the detail and the, uh, I think that, um, when it gets put on there, you wouldn't know that it wasn't there from what you have now. I think that it, it works out pretty well. So Thank you. I'll move on to the another commissioner. I'm done. Mark, would you like to speak about it? Mark, uh, can you hear us? You're up. Oh, yeah, I've got nothing. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, no, same, same comment. Um, I don't know, Hank, if you can zoom in a little on the, um, the bottom the south elevation proposed. Uh, I just want to kind of see a little bit better what is happening. So you got a brick, um, just anywhere where we, where we see the, the siding meet the, the foundation, looks like you have a brick to match existing multicolored brick. Um, I guess I, and my only concern there is, you know, we're um, you know, in the mode of um, differentiating historic from new. So, um, and I, I guess also when we try to match these old bricks um, and the color, it, it often doesn't, doesn't look quite right. So I'm wondering if uh, we might consider going with a, a, a brick that uh, is not necessarily contrasting, but um, is kind of obviously not of the original uh, house because we, we, I think the Hardy board does that plainly, um, but also you know now we have a, a chimney that is identical in uh, shape with the exception of, of its height, um, and we have brick around the, the, the base perimeter that is meant to mimic the um, original house. So I, I guess I would you know ask if we would be considerate of a, a brick that um, is either. Um, you know, it could still be a, a recycled or historic brick, uh, but maybe does not uh, attempt to match the multicolored uh, brick that we see. I'm just looking at another, another picture over here, back to the elevation. Um, it seems to me that we would want to differentiate that. Is, is, is there brick below the, um, the current existing two-story addition? Yes. And yes. that of the original house? Is that, yes. I, I'm guessing there might have been a foundation there before. It's the old porch, and yes, it's the existing brick that matches the house. Uh, I've been told that this can be matched. As have I. The The most difficult part yeah. is going to be, I believe, as Hank said, the the mortar. And, and I've dyed mortar in the past. Um, the best way to dye this mortar would probably be with some dirt and, you know, maybe about 90 years worth of debris. <laughs> I but you, you understand my, I mean, one, one, of, one of our stipulations in the guidelines is to not, you know, create a false sense of history. 
So while I appreciate that the, the formal gesture on the, on the chimney, especially and the detailing there, you know, a brick that does not match would would give give a clear indication that this is not an original chimney. Um, so that, you know, I don't think it's it's not a uh, you know deal breaker. Just one observation that I, I put to the rest of the commission as well. That's all I had, Chris. Thank you, uh, Louise. Um, um, I like the plan uh, very much. Um, I was concerned about the long run um, on that one side without the step in for the um, for the addition. Um, but taking a look at the elevation that we have here um, and the brick of the original house and then the addition and then the, um, the chimney, um, I think will kind of break up that line enough. Um, so that it will, uh, it won't just be a long, a long wall of um, house. Uh, to Jim's point, I could go either way on a matching um, brick or something that's complementary to the original house. Um, it look might look kind of funny um, having just the original porch brick, that whatever um, mm -hmm. ten feet or whatever it is, and then the rest of it uh, being something else. Mm -hmm. um, to Hank's point, if we can join um, those two downspouts, um, I think it would be a, you know, it'd be a much better uh, look and probably function better um, for the homeowners. I think, Mr. Chair, if I could interject one thing here. Um, part of the thing was is that uh, Mr. Rosenblatt, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you had no intentions of removing the existing brick under the previous addition. Correct. So that would mean that on that elevation, am I, am I correct with that? Yes. Okay. So that would mean that you would have a cold joint at that point in time between the new addition and the old addition, as far as bringing in new brick. And I think that's why the original concept was, is just to continue the original brick because one, it was available and two, it would look less awkward. If you were looking at where the old addition started and you started a new brick from that point forward, then it would make a better case for perhaps using a different type of brick to differentiate. Since the whole thing is an addition and the hardy plank really denotes the addition, perhaps that's enough to maybe quell some of Jim's concerns as far as that and have that be the factor because the brick is only a couple feet high if I'm right mr yeah, Rosenblatt. Hank, the only thing is if you even if we pulled it off of the existing edition, yeah I, that's you still have the same joint where it meets the house because it is a flush condition right now right but it would look less awkward at that point if you were going to do it at all right than it would if you did it in the middle of the sided edition right i see what you're saying yes agreed so, my guess and mr Levinsky, <laughs> Sorry, can I just interject one thing? I'm, I'm looking at a, a street view photo of the house on my screen here, and actually the downspout um, is, uh, the existing downspout in this photo anyway, unless it's been altered, is adjacent to the, where the transition between the brick and the siding, uh, not, not further toward the, I guess it would be west, um, as, as shown on this drawing. So I think there's you know, a good, you know, the width of the original addition separating the proposed new downspout and the existing downspout. So ganging those together um, probably is not an option, assuming that the photo I'm looking at is, is accurate. Uh, Hank, you have a photograph of that side and that very joint and, and uh, in, in the package that we sent you. I and believe, it, it I, believe has, I, I do, but I won't have the new portion no but you can see the existing condition where the siding actually is in front of the ex of the uh, old brick it's a very curious detail because it was the porch uh in the package to your right photos of existing yeah 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 the siding okay. actually sits on the brick yeah, it's it's a very a curious detail. And trying to work with it, uh, I think this is a solution that I think is going to be fairly seamless. There you go. 
Still not seeing it, Hank. No, not seeing it. I'm sorry. Hold on. <coughs> Top right. That's Can it right there. That? Look at that. <laughs> One of those lines is, in fact, the termination bar of the siding because it sticks in front of the brick. We have to close that edge of the siding, if you will. And the other is the downspout. So there is only one downspout. Okay. Fair enough. No, but I think what they're saying is if if you look at the south side elevation, it actually shows the downspout to the left of the two windows on the existing addition, when in reality it's to the right of the two windows. That's correct. So I think, and I can't remember who was saying it, but I think what you're saying is we could probably leave the existing downspout to the right of the two windows. And then the proposed new downspout is far enough away that we shouldn't gang them together. The, the and it chimney, won't look I think that's true. The yeah. chimney is going to impede that collection on that side anyway. Yeah. So putting the lower roof into that downspout is very obviously easy, not easy, but achievable. And, and, and leaving the other downspot on the other side of the chimney, I think is essential because you can't get through the chimney. Does that make sense? So um, I guess I get a chance to quickly comment. Um, I, I uh, think that with uh, the massing of the house and um, the hardy plank, some of the roof pitches and things that are slightly different, uh, that uh, it's clearly differentiated the addition. I, I would rather have the brick the same just because I think it would look like you just missed it. You were trying and you missed. <laughs> and, you um, and I think that it's pretty evident with, uh, you know, this house was sort of a classic square box of brick. They even gave, you know, bricked up the gables, right? Everything. Yeah. Um, and this one is not, you know, that, that brick ledge and then going to the siding to me helps differentiate it. So I don't have a problem continuing the brick because I don't think people are going to assume that there was some big bricked porch all the way out there. Um, other than that, I have no comments. Um, so at this point in time, I'd like to see if there's anybody from the public who would like to speak on behalf of the application. Hi, um, my name is Stacy Brown. I'm at 26680 York Road. Um, I was actually emailing Hank earlier asking for the plans. Um, and I just wanted to say that I looked at over the plans that looked like a very well thought through addition. Um, and I agree with all of the commissioner's comments about how you do have the differentiation between the original and the new addition. And I thought that they did a very thoughtful job of matching with the existing addition and pulling that back towards the back. So I, I thought it was a great project. Thank you for commenting. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak about the application? I don't see anybody else. So Hank, I'm gonna close the public participation. Okay, noted. Any final comments from commissioners or questions before we entertain a motion? Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion. Move to approve the application under standard two. Thank you, Mark. Do we have a second? A second. So Steve, thank you. So we're gonna do the roll call vote, Louise. Aye. Uh, Mark. Mark, Aye. you're up. Sorry, we couldn't hear that. My motion, so I'll go gay. Yeah, okay. he's... <laughs> Just, I don't know. You gotta vote, right? You gotta count the votes, so. Steve? Uh, yay. Jim? Aye. And I'll vote yes as well, aye. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks for all the presentation materials. We appreciate when you submit some thorough materials. It makes our job much easier. So thank you very much and enjoy the edition. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for hanging in there.
Um, <laughs> <I know. laughs> so Hank, um, let's see, do we have any other new, let me see, I've lost my agenda. So this here point we go. Time, Mr. Chairman, we have nothing else for this evening. Um, I do expect that we will have Mr. Zacharias back. Uh, I do have one possible other project that may be coming before you, um, but at this time, that's all we have. So uh, just before we um, make a motion for adjourn, we do have one last time for public participation. And is there anybody who would like to speak to the Historic District Commission? Okay, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Could I have a second? Second. Okay, I think we're all gonna say aye. So aye. 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 We Thanks, will show the meeting adjourned at 918. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Thank for your help. You. Thank you. Good night. See you next right. time. Good night.